The topic our group decided to research is osteitis pubis, surgery versus conservative management. To begin, we are going to hand out a case study and you will need to work in groups of four or five. Try and come up with the best diagnosis possible of this athlete. Take about five minutes to come up with your answer. A 22-year-old male soccer player for the UBC varsity team has been suffering with chronic groin pain for up to a year now. He has a strain in his groin when he plays on both sides and strain or tearing on the lower portion located more centrally on his abdomen. These symptoms are aggravated when he runs, twists, shoots, and he also has difficulty going from a seated position to a standing position. Try and diagnose him. Okay, great work everyone. Some good input on what you thought it was. The whole point of that exercise was to show how difficult it is to diagnose groin injuries and injuries in the region of the hip and torso. With the symptoms displayed, it makes it difficult to diagnose with just that specific piece of info because these injuries have many overlapping symptoms. As mentioned before, we're going to talk about osteitis pubis, a rare condition that can be confused with other injuries such as sports hernias. More specifically, we're going to discuss surgical methods versus conservative management techniques in treating osteitis pubis and which one may be better. We have two learning objectives for today. After this lecture, the students should be able to list various pros and cons to both surgical and conservative management of osteitis pubis and select which treatment would be preferred for a quicker return to play. Right now we would like to split you up into groups of four or five again and create a list of pros and cons for both surgery and conservative management of osteitis pubis. Take about five minutes to do this. Now we would like to do a vote. How many of you think surgery would be the best option for a quicker return to play? Okay, now how many of you think conservative management would be a better option? Now here's a quick overview of what osteitis pubis is. As mentioned before, it is a rare condition of the hip, more specifically the pubic bone and the pubic symphysis. It is mainly inflammation of the pubic symphysis and is largely caused by overuse and instability of the anterior portion of the pelvis. Symptoms include sharp, aching pain of the anterior pelvis over the pubic symphysis and lower abs. This pain may also radiate into the adductors, sometimes going into both legs. The most common treatment options of osteitis pubis include conservative management and surgery. Moreover, there are three types of surgery, which include curettage, wedge resection, and arthrodesis. First off, we have conservative management. Conservative methods of treatment are mostly used when the patient is showing the first signs of osteitis pubis or for the general population due to the fact that they won't be performing high intensity exercises that will exacerbate the condition. For athletes with a chronic condition, surgery is recommended for quicker return to play. The conservative methods include such practices as rest, physiotherapy, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, corticosteroidal pubic injections, ultrasonography, radiation therapy, anticoagulation, oral glucocorticoids, and intravenous pamidronate. While these techniques are not proven to work for all patients, some are more reliable than others, namely physiotherapy, rest, NSAIDs, and corticosteroid pubis synthesis injections. With physiotherapy, the focus should be on stretching the antagonist muscles at the pubis symphysis, core stability, and strengthening the surrounding muscles. These are just guidelines for physiotherapy. Every patient is different and will have different needs. Rest allows the body to recover while avoiding further injury. NSAIDs reduce the inflammation at the area alleviating pain. A combination of these three is generally used for optimal results. Injectional therapy is also used and evokes a quicker return to play than other conservative measures. It is mostly effective when symptoms first appear and before the condition is chronic. The pros of conservative methods are that it is non-surgical, so it is less invasive, less expensive, and there's lower possibility of complications. It is also highly successful with the general population. The cons of conservative methods are that the recovery time is longer, along with the delayed return to play time. Now with a partner, take about 30 seconds to one minute and teach each other the pros and cons of conservative treatment. The first surgical treatment we're going to consider is the wedge resection. This procedure was initially described by Dr. Schnute in 1961. It involves removal of the superior portion of the pubic symphysis while preserving the rather important inferior arcuate pubic ligaments and thereby theoretically preventing instability. Now we're going to take a look at some evidence for the outcomes of this procedure. The first study was done by James Grace and his colleagues. It involved 10 patients who failed a six-month course of conservative treatment. At an average of 92 months following the surgery, 7 out of the 10 patients were satisfied. However, out of the 3 unsatisfied patients, 2 had some degree of posterior pelvic instability. The authors concluded that it is a useful treatment, but that it's not the most optimal approach when considering long-term outcomes of the procedure. In another study done by Mehin and his colleagues, they looked at 5 patients which were symptomatic for over 4 years. Following the surgery, 4 out of the 5 patients were pain-free at 31 months following the procedure. 
The authors concluded that within the relatively short follow-up period, the surgery is quite successful as most patients were satisfied and there was no post-operative complications or infection. Now we will go over some limitations to this procedure. First of all, there is very little high-quality evidence clearly describing the long-term outcomes of wedge resections. More specifically, there are no randomized controlled trials or even prospective controlled studies for that matter. Lastly, as a result of potential side effects of pelvic instability, this procedure is not frequently indicated in the athletic population as pelvic stability is crucial in most sports. In summary, a wedge resection of the pubic symphysis is a useful first-line treatment with relatively fast recovery time. However, it's not a great option for long-term outcome as it has some rather serious side effects like pelvic instability. As a result, it is ideally indicated for infectious osteitis pubis in non-athletic population. Now please find a partner and take no longer than a minute to discuss the pros and cons of wedge resections. Another operative treatment for osteitis pubis is orthodesis. It is recommended for patients with significant low back pain and debilitation, usually caused by pelvic instability. The surgery is performed by fusing the sacroiliac joints and the pubic bones together using both bone grafts and compression plates. This radiograph here shows a successfully completed orthodesis surgery. You can see the bone grafts and compression plates holding the pelvis together. A study on surgery for rugby players by William and his colleagues shows that bone graft alone is not strong enough to sustain intense physical activities. This may also apply for other intense sports such as football and soccer which require lots of running or kicking. Therefore, both bone grafts and compression plates must be used together in order to successfully stabilize the pelvis. Another study by Mahin and colleagues looked at five subjects who were symptomatic for four years. Pain was resolved in two out of the five subjects at the 20-month follow-up. The treatment was considered failure in the other 60%. One of the subjects required a second attempt at fusion because the bones failed to unite on the first attempt. There were no post-operative complications or infections. Advantages of arthrodesis surgery are its reliability as seen by the improvement of pelvic stability, durability through the reduction of signs and symptoms, lesser chance for stress fractures, and a higher chance of successfully maintaining pelvic stability. The disadvantages are it's more invasive than the other procedures, it requires longer operative time, there's a possibility for infection as with most surgeries, and finally a secondary operation is necessary to remove the internal fixation device. In summary, arthrodesis is essential for improving pelvic stability which is important for patients who want to continue engaging in physical activity. It is an ideal surgery for patients with persistent osteitis pubis, and unlike other treatments, signs and symptoms are significantly reduced. Now with a partner, take about 30 seconds to one minute and teach each other the pros and cons of arthrodesis surgery. Curatage is the use of a curette to remove tissue by scraping or scooping. It is a less invasive day surgery that doesn't take long to conduct. In a level four case study done by Mulhall et al, they examined two professional soccer players. Curatage of the pubic symphysis was performed, and both of these subjects had experienced chronic groin pain lasting one to one and a half years. When they first became injured, they tried conservative management, but it didn't succeed in helping them return to play. After various tests, an MRI confirmed the diagnosis of osteitis pubis. The day after surgery, the subjects performed hip stretching exercises for eight to 11 weeks and then proceeded to normal training. Subjects reported no infections or wounds after the surgery and rated it as being successful with high satisfaction. The return to play was quick, and within six months, they were back to playing soccer. Another study done by Radich and Anir was also a level 4 case study. They looked at 23 athletes who had been in discomfort for 13 plus months before a presentation. They then reviewed them after 24 months. 21 patients returned to pain-free running within 3 months, 17 to training within 4 months, and 16 to full-out training within 5 months. Once again, these subjects experienced no post-op complications and had a high satisfaction rate. 78% felt their symptoms were better than before. This said that curatage could be beneficial for quick return to play if conservative management doesn't work out. The general consensus for curatage is that it is the most promising surgical method for osteitis pubis, but more research needs to be done on it. There needs to be more RCTs conducted with it and more research needs to be done on the top level athletes. This method could be the quickest way to return to play compared to conservative management, but again, more research needs to be done. Now take 30 seconds to a minute with a partner to teach each other the pros and cons of curatage.
Okay, so now we would like you all to go back into your groups and see if you can add to your list of pros and cons. All right, well done with that, everyone. And once again, we'll have a vote. Those of you that feel that surgery is the best option, raise your hand. Okay, so now those of you who feel conservative management is the best option, raise your hand. The problem with osteitis pubis is that there's a lot of uncertainty with the injury. There's also a lot of uncertainty in terms of which treatment options are the best. The majority of cases resolve non-operatively, but this takes a long time and can often frustrate athletes. The benefits of this, though, are that it isn't invasive and doesn't require surgery. The only reason to operate is if the athlete is suffering from chronic disabling and persistent groin pain. There's also no conclusive evidence out there to support any of the treatment options mentioned in this lecture. In a paper found in the BJSM by Choi and et al., they state how there are no RCTs for the treatment of osteitis pubis that they found in their shift strategy. Over 24,000 papers were analyzed, and the highest level of evidence that they could obtain was level 4. They state that the current medical li literature provides treatment options for osteitis pubis and osteomyelitis pubis based on level 4 evidence, making it difficult to compare treatment arms with one another. Based on the available case reports in the literature, first-line therapy in the treatment of osteitis pubis should consist of conservative therapy and or treatment with injections given a good safety profile and a low level of invasiveness. Level 4 evidence also suggests that surgical intervention provides a reasonable treatment option in refractory cases. Recommendations for further research efforts include RCT with various treatment arms for osteitis pubis. Now we'll briefly review the learning objectives. The goal for you was to list various pros and cons to both surgical and conservative management of osteitis pubis and select which treatment would be preferred if you wanted to have a quicker return to play. To end this lecture, we would like everyone to write down one thing that they learned from it and hand it in to us at the front.